Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. Ready to get 30, 30, ready to get 30, ready to get 20, 20, 20, ready to get 20, 20, ready to get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month. So give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes in detail. There's no better feeling than a personal win. And the State Farm Personal Price Plan can help you do just that. Talk to a State Farm agent today to learn how you can bundle and save with the personal price plan. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Prices are based on rating plans that vary by state. Coverage options are selected by the customer. Availability, amount of discounts and savings, and eligibility vary by state. When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Kroger, for thousands of appetizing ingredients that inspire countless mouth-watering meals. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week, and up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with points. So you can get big flavors and big savings. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. This episode is brought to you by Honda. When you test drive the new Prologue EV, there's a lot that could impress you about it. There's the class-leading passenger space, the clean, thoughtful design, and the intuitive technology. But out of everything, what you'll really love most is that it's a Honda. Visit honda.com slash EV to see offers. Welcome back to Rams Up, your favorite LA Rams podcast. We are part of the Fans First Sports Network. You can follow us on our YouTube channel as well at LA Rams Up. I'm your host, Mark. I'll be joined occasionally by my football gurus, Paul and Ian. Let's get to it. What's going on, Ram fans? Episode 566 of Rams Up going to get to our power rankings, get through some pregame news and notes leading up to this Rams-Seahawks game, week nine game up there in Seattle. Hey, it's episode 566. Let's talk real quickly about a player who wore number 66, a pretty darn good offensive lineman, guard center Tom Newberry. 6'2", 285 pounds out of Wisconsin lacrosse, the Rams drafted him in the second round of the 1986 draft, made the all-rookie team, and went on to play nine years for the Rams all the way through the 1994 season, started 128 games, was named to two Pro Bowls. Pretty darn good offensive lineman Tom Newberry. And hey, how about Oshan Mathis? 2023 Rams draft pick, he was signed to the Patriots practice squad soon after he was waived by the Rams, and he has been added to their 53-man roster, so shout out to Mathis. Good luck. Good luck until November 17th anyways, when the Rams and Patriots meet up in New England. It's a little early to get to the injury stuff, but thanks to Cameron DeSilva, the great writer for the Rams Wire, he had some notes to share. Sean McVay saying that Steve Avila, Jonah Jackson, and John Johnson could all practice this week, but probably not likely. It's possible they could practice, but less likely that they will be designated to return this week, more likely by the Week 10 matchup. And Jordan Whittington, he played nine snaps against the Raiders, right, and then sat out against the Vikings, and that was more due to the return of Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup. So, No word on Whittington's health, but I'm not sure how relevant it is. Would he be the number three or four wide receiver at this point? Be nice to see him develop even more this season, but Rams got to put the best receivers out there and go get a win against Seattle. So not sure if there's any point in rushing Whittington back. Hey, I checked out the AZ Central website. They do a good job of sharing thoughts on games like the Rams and Seahawks. So the over-under on this game is 47.5 points. Now, I had already reported that the opening spread, at least before last week's games, was Seahawks by three. 
Seahawks minus three. And then the other day, after the Sunday games, it was Seahawks minus one. Now I am seeing Seahawks plus one and a half. Now I'm going by CBSSports.com. I don't know what the odds are across the board, but that would mean a four and a half point swing in three or four days. Rams are now favored by a point and a half. Bookies.com betting the Seahawks will cover. There is a Republic predicting the Rams 24 to 20 victory over the Seahawks. Sports betting dime. They think the Seahawks are going to win and they put it at an average of 28.8 points for the Seahawks, 18 points for the Rams, a 10 point victory for the Seattle. Man, I'd be surprised if that happened. ESPN says the Rams have a 50.7 chance of beating the Seahawks. And Dimers predicts a Rams 24 to 21 win. That one seems like the most realistic. And they wrote, after extensive simulations, our model gives the Rams a win probability of 58%, while the Seahawks have a win probability of 42%. And Sports Illustrated has the Rams at number 15 in their power rankings, up seven spots. If you check out my power rankings at the end of this episode, I don't assign a ranking for the Rams. I do have, well, you know what? I'm not going to give it away. Check out the power rankings, but that's about where I have them. Seems like a fair ranking, number 15. And they had the Seahawks dropping nine spots from 10 to 19. And you know what? If you have a team dropping nine spots in one week, you had them overrated. And did you see the move Giants coach Brian Dable pulled at the end of that game against the Steelers Monday Night Football? Steelers second and three, so they're probably going to pick up the first down. So Dable intentionally put 12 men on the field. There's 247 left in the game, so Pittsburgh gets the first down. And then the Giants use two timeouts, force the fourth down punt, and get the ball back with two minutes left. And as Warren Sharp pointed out, the announcers really had no clue what was going on. Joe Buck basically criticizing the Giants for needless penalties. He did not get it, and Troy Eggman didn't either. And a stat shared by the LA Rams PR department on X, Bo Limmer and Justin Dietrich have not given up a sack in a combined 283 pass-blocking snaps so far this season. Pretty impressive. What are we going to do when Avila and Jonah Jackson come back? Nice problem to have. I assume Jackson and especially Avila will be starting, but I don't know. Kind of like keeping Limmer out there. And from J.B. Long, most 100-yard receiving performances in their first 20 games of an NFL career, OBJ, 10, Justin Jefferson, 8, and Puka Nakua, Eight. Puka Nakua has a chance to elevate himself into second place. This Sunday's game will be his 20th. Back in a second with our Week 9 Power Rankings. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I have my Week 9 Power Rankings and a lot of shuffling in the top 12. A few teams who I have identified as, well, their seasons are over, sad as it is, and I have a bunch of shuffling in the green room. Some teams just getting kicked out probably forever and a couple of new entries. Let's get into it. My week 12 power rankings here from Rams Up. So I have officially ended the season for eight teams, five in the AFC, three in the NFC, and we can all probably Recite them together in the AFC, the Browns, Raiders, Patriots, Jags, and Titans, all done. Thank you for participating. See you next year. And in the NFC, the Saints, Panthers, and Giants. And the Saints, man, after two weeks of this season, I think I had them in the top 10. I'm sure I did. And it just all fell apart. A lot of it due to injuries, including the injury to their quarterback. But hey... They'll be back next year. I think they were pointed in the right direction. Wouldn't be surprised if they made a coaching change, though, before the 2025 season. But probably the biggest disappointment, based on what we saw, 
after two weeks anyways, the New Orleans Saints, they're pretty much done. Now, who do I have in the green room? Well, dropping out of the green room is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and another team that's been hurt by injuries, impacted by injuries significantly over the last couple of weeks, and they have lost to the Falcons twice now. I don't think they're going to be up for a wild card spot. Don't think they're going to be able to move up and tie the Falcons, and they'd have to have a better record than the Falcons, right? Losing twice to them already. So, man, they're really on the brink here. The Buccaneers, they need to figure it out. Uh, not looking good for Tampa Bay. So they're out of my green room. And um, let's see, I got another team leaving the green room. That would be the San Diego, not San Diego, the LA Chargers. But for a good reason, they'll be in my top 12. And another team entering the green room, dropping out of the top 12, the Seattle Seahawks. And who are the other teams in my green room? Well, we have the Cowboys. Man, another really disappointing team. And I'm probably being generous, even including them at this point. Three and four Dallas Cowboys. The Falcons, even though they're atop of their division at five and three, I don't think they're in the top 12, not one of the 12 best teams in the league. And then the Arizona Cardinals, one of the hardest teams to figure out. Four and four, impressive wins, disappointing losses. And yeah, they're, they're a team that's really difficult to figure out. So they're in my green room, as are one of the best defensive teams in the league, the Denver Broncos. Um, they're at five and three as well, but I'm just not feeling it for them in the long term. But giving them the nod in the green room and the Chicago Bears, who at four and three should be five and two, except for that horrible play, the Hail Mary at the end there. Uh, they had a little winning streak going there. The question is, can they bounce back? Hopefully us Ram fans hope they bounce back and beat the Cardinals. That would be really uh, good news for our Rams. And the last team in the green room, you guessed it, our LA Rams are back at three and four. I've seen them as low as 19th and 20th in some power polls, but I don't know if they saw what our offense has been doing, uh, what our offense did with uh, Puka and Cooper back, Kyron Williams, Matthew Stafford. This is a really dangerous offense and a defense that's maybe finding their way a little bit with a lot of young guys. So they are probably at the bottom of the green room, but in the green room for sure. So next up, Let's get into our top 12. We'll start, we will start with number 12, work our way up to our new number one team. So moving up out of the green room into the number 12 spot, the LA Chargers, four and three. This defense is looking really legit. And, you know, I already mentioned the Denver Broncos and their defense. I think the separator here is the quarterbacks between the Chargers and the Broncos, Justin Herbert versus Bo Nix. Uh, I'll roll with Justin Herbert at this point. So that's why the Chargers are in the 12 spot and maybe not the Denver Broncos. At the 11 spot, the Pittsburgh Steelers, and they move up one. They are six and two now. Not a great resume, though. They've beaten the Falcons, Broncos, Chargers, Raiders, Jets, and Giants. Yeah, there's some good teams there, but it's not exactly a gauntlet. Still not thrilled about the Steelers' chances to get far into the playoffs. Uh, really eyeballing those two games between the Ravens and Steelers that are left on the schedule. If I'm not mistaken, the Steelers have not played a divisional game yet. My number 10 team dropping three spots, and yeah, you're going to hate me for this, but I had the Commanders at seven last week. I dropped them to number 10, and I saw someone move them up uh, to the five spot at home, beating the Chicago Bears on a Hail Mary. So let that sink in for a minute here. Do they really deserve to move up based on that result? I say no. And I've been a big fan of theirs. I've been in their corner. But if you see these guys coming up that I have above the Commanders, I think it makes sense. I'll stand by that. Commanders at number 10, dropping three spots despite beating the Bears on a Hail Mary at home. My number nine team, I wouldn't say they're dropping like a rock, but man, a couple weeks ago, they were my number one team. Then they dropped to number five. 
And now the Rams beat them and they fall to number nine. The Minnesota Vikings, five and two, losers of three of two straight. Maybe just come up back to earth. Maybe uh, this is where the Vikings belong. We'll see, you know, um, how it goes. Uh, I thought they were playing above their head. Uh, maybe Sam Darnold is a better quarterback than we all thought all along. But um, I think it's just more a case of, uh, you know, they were just surprising teams. Good team. Uh, really good shot at making the playoffs. But man, losing that left tackle really hurts. My number eight team moving up two spots, the 49ers. Only four and four, but they've been working through a lot of injuries. Uh, they pretty much handled the Cowboys. Cowboys gave it a little scare late in the game, but that was a 49ers game. <laughs> they, they had that in hand for the most part. Um, so when they start getting healthy, I have a feeling they're going to climb back up pretty quickly. Although there are some concerns about Brock Purdy starting to emerge as far as whether he should get that big contract or not. What are the analytics? Uh, the, what are the experts saying about Brock Purdy uh, this year? And I'm going to do a little segment on that at some point, echoing an article I read on this subject. It's pretty interesting. My number seven team moving up one spot, the Green Bay Packers, six and two, winners of four straight, but the last two by the skin of their chinny chin chin. Well, where they are just, you know, hey, that's a good thing. Teams find a way to, to win in the end, but they have been the beneficiary of uh, a lot of turnovers, takeaways, and good things going their way late in the game. But Jordan Love, groin injury, we'll see how long he's out. And then my number six team, dropping five spots, last week's number one team, the Baltimore Ravens. I don't get this team. Just another really difficult team to figure out. They had a five-game winning streak, and then they lose to the Browns of all teams. One of the teams that I have already ended their season. <laughs> they are done, and then the Ravens lose to them. My number five team, the Houston Texans, 6-2. and two. They had that painful loss at Green Bay, and they bounced back and beat the biggest, really the only threat within their division, the Indianapolis Colts took care of the Colts. So they're in really good shape to win that division. And um, I, I just, I picked them to go to the Super Bowl and play our Rams. Sometimes I um, I wonder if they're really ready for that. Can they deal with teams like the Bills and the Chiefs and the Ravens in the playoffs? Well, we'll see. But right now at number five, moved up one spot from number six, actually. And Probably the biggest riser of the week, the Philadelphia Eagles. I had them at nine. Now they are my number four team. Five and two winners of three straight. Uh, the competition hasn't been extremely tough over those three weeks. Browns, Giants, Bengals. But those last two, they've won by a combined score of 65 to 20. Uh, so that's over the Giants and Bengals. And I picked the Bengals to win that. I thought they really would in Cincinnati. Couldn't get it done. So the Eagles um, getting back on track. The Eagles of about a year ago before they went on that big skid last year. That was horrible. And my number three team. I feel pretty good about these three. And I've seen these kind of mixed and matched a little bit with other power rankings. But I like mine. I have the Bills at number three moving up one spot. Six and two after back-to-back -back losses to the Ravens and Texans. They've won three straight now. And they went into Seattle and took care of business, didn't they? And my number two team, and this is where I'm probably going to get the biggest disagreement. I have the undefeated Chiefs at number two. You know, what more can you say about an undefeated team? However, I still think they are, you know, I don't think they're winning really impressively. I mean, they beat the 49ers. 49ers are shorthanded, though. Um, they just haven't even put teams away like you would expect. Uh, hey, they put teams away in the playoffs, though, don't they? But I'm nitpicking here. Chiefs 7-0, and but I don't know, just not passing the eyeball test for me to be the number one team. And my number one team is passing the eyeball test right now. The Detroit Lions, they move up from number three. So the Chiefs dropped. The Chiefs were two last week. They stay at two. The Ravens dropped from that one spot. Drop down quite a bit, and the Lions take their place at number one. Lions last week, number three. 
They are 6-1, and one, put up 52 points on the Titans. They've won five straight. And talk about putting teams away. The Lions have averaged 43 points over the last four weeks. So they are running on all cylinders. Now the Aiden Hutchinson thing. You know, the Chiefs made a trade for a, a, an edge rusher outside linebacker. Uh, Uche coming over from the Patriots. Probably butchered that name. Thought the Lions might make a play for someone like that. Uh, but, hey, they're rolling without him. I don't, and that's a, that's a big loss. We'll see if it eventually hurts them. But Lions, 6-1. and one, Just rolling along. Really impressive on both sides of the ball. And they're my number one team. And I feel I feel really good about that. I know a lot of, a lot of people, hey, free, feel free to comment and tell me how wrong I am that I assume most folks probably think the Chiefs should be number one. I'd take the Lions right now if those two teams were playing. Now, if they were playing in a Super Bowl, I'd probably be betting on Patrick Mahomes. But we're talking about right now, who's the best team in football? It's the Detroit Lions, hands down. That's it. There's my week nine power rankings from Rams Up. Hope you enjoyed it. That's going to do it for this episode. Remember, you can reach us at ramsuppodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget about our YouTube channel. Our handle is at laramsup.com. Till next time, keep the horns up, stay safe, and have fun out there.